Hello, it's Curtis from Omaha Knife. Today we're going to look at approximately 50 small forest axes. And I'll remind you that you can find our website at omahaknife.com. If you're in the Omaha area, uh, we're easy to find. Uh, actually, look up our address because you won't remember if I tell you. If you're traveling through our area, a lot of people stop in who are doing that. We're just minutes from I-80. It's hardly out of your way at all. Uh, directions are on our website. Go to the website and click directions. There's like a map picture. Uh, even if you're a semi driver, uh, you can get in and out here. If you're driving a semi, if you have your trailer with you, uh, it's probably easier to go behind the building. You have a good shot in and out. If you're on vacation, driving a car, that's super easy. Uh, look at the map though. We can be a little bit tricky to find. We're in a plaza that is tucked behind some other buildings. Um, we have a lot of stuff in, oh, I, I will give you a tip. We're looking at, the, at these small forest axes. Grand's Forest, there's never enough to go around, and we hold back a few pieces of every model that are available in store only. So when the website shows out of stock, you can't order them on the phone or anything like that, but you can call and ask if they're available in the store and then come and pick them up here. So uh, that's because web people will clean everything out. And then when people come into the store, it's kind of embarrassing for us when there's this big open spot on the wall where there used to be inventory. So we hold some back. Um, <coughs> what we're looking at today is a whole bunch of small forest axes. Uh, we just got an order in, which is the best supply of small forest axes we've gotten in a while. Uh, and then fortunately, we weren't out from the last shipment. So we, we've got a great number going into this Christmas season. What we're doing with this video is just showing you uh, from axe to axe. People really love the small forest axe. There are different makers and a lot of other details that are just fun to appreciate. And I mentioned in the video we did yesterday, when an order comes in, we kind of gather around and look at the different ones, uh, mainly the details uh, in the handles. We love cool looking wood grain. So we, we look at those and pass them around the cool looking ones anyway. So we're gonna go through, we'll show you some of those. Now, if you're not interested in looking at this stuff, you may not wanna watch the rest of the video. We're not giving any real secrets or anything, I don't think. Uh, maybe we will, I'll try to think of some secret to share with you. So we'll grab these kind of one at a time and look at the cool stuff. If they're boring, we won't spend time on them. So these are some that were from our inventory. Um, this one, it, it's okay looking. And look, well, probably everybody knows the stuff about them, but let's just point out some of the details. On the head, the maker's initials, the Grand's Force stamp there, and the stamp there. When people are picking axes, those are some of the details they look at, how crisp those markings are, in addition to how cool the handle looks. Now, not everybody cares about that stuff, it's just a tool. But if you're somebody who does care about it, you can, when you place your order, either email or call, and we will look at these details for you. Tell us what's important to you, whether it's a particular maker you like or uh, an appearance you like in the handle. We'll tell us what you like and we'll do the best we can. Of course, you can't describe the perfect ax and have us get it for you. We're just gonna do the best we can from what we have. So back to looking at this one, it's kind of cool, but it's not awesome. The grain at the end isn't perfectly straight. Now, in reality, uh, the straight grain, many people think that makes it super strong. Uh, that, that's not actually the case. And the, the amount of wood you have here with that weight ahead, it really doesn't matter at all. We rarely see broken handles in a small forest ax, regardless of those details. So anyway, that one's not especially exciting. Uh, this one, the grain's a little more straight, so it gives some cool looking grain there. Uh, the black in the stamping there isn't as nice, matters to some people, not to others. Good stampings there. And here, we'll just go faster because we have a bunch to do. We'll only dwell on the cool looking ones, but we'll just look briefly at each. Nice stamp uh, on that one, nice clear stamp. The clearness of the stamp varies sometimes based on how long the particular blacksmith has been working, his stamp can get worn out. So some people may not like those character details. They may perceive it as a flaw in the wood and a weakness. It's not, but if you don't like it, that's fine. I like things like that. It's kind of cool looking in this case, it interferes there. So if I was looking for one for myself, I would pass that one because um, it's just not as cool looking. 
Let me tell you something else. There's a downside to picking the most cool ax. Um, you get it home, you look at it, you show your friends, and then you're afraid to use it because you scuff it up and then you've ruined your perfect ax. Some cool detail there, but it's not the most awesome. The, the fill-in of the black's not ideal. And now as far as strength goes, a cross angle like that technically is gonna be more strong uh, than straight. 15 degrees off straight is what actually is the most strong. And we'll just go through a bunch of them, holding them up like that. If there's nothing cool to point out, I'll just hold them for a second and you can look at the grain. This one's getting a little more to what I like. I like seeing a lot of contrast like what we have there. A little bit darker wood. Dark handles are less common than light colored handles. So when we have a great looking dark wood handle, I set it aside and wait for somebody to ask for that. And not everybody likes dark wood. So if we send it to somebody who doesn't like dark wood, they're not gonna like it. And then somebody who does like dark wood doesn't get one. So we, we set it aside and it sits there until somebody asks for it. This one's a little more cool. <coughs> I like that grain pattern there. And of course the lines on down. Other side also nice looking which if you like the same thing as I like, uh, when you order uh, just in the notes at checkout, put pick me a cool looking one and we will. That one's kind of boring. Dark spots like that, some people don't like that. Uh, all the broken handles I've seen in any brand, never any correlation to marks like that. Never seen it happen. Now this is one that I had set aside waiting for somebody and will continue to have set aside waiting for somebody who wants a cool one. Because look how the grain lines kind of come together at the logo. It's just a super looking handle. Now this is one of those that when you get it, if you go use it and put scuffs on it, it's gonna be kind of heartbreaking. So it's that, that kind of double-edged sword. And the other side's not as cool looking, but it, it does, but depending on what you like, I guess there, there's some cool look to it. So that one we're gonna put over here. Okay, now we're going into axes that just arrived. And in another video we showed the case as it comes from Grand Force in Sweden and how these are packed. In another video we went through this so we won't dwell on it. You can see some of these we put back in for this video. So back to this ax, super cool looking. and has good markings. The other side also uh, looks pretty good. Not as cool in the wood, the stampings are good. One detail that people sometimes mention, they no longer put the metal wedge in the top. They quit doing that more than a year ago, but people still mention it every now and then. It's not needed, it was never needed and would put cracks uh, sometimes there. So my preference all along was that they not be there. So I was very happy when they quit. Other people find it a little concerning, but don't even worry about it. pretty cool. That's pretty. This one's cool. And Anne, you can tell me if I'm holding, if I'm taking too much time or not enough time on each one. Some people, I wanted to bring up that some people are concerned about a crack here. Oh yes. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. We'll, we'll show it on a couple. Um, it's see if not they show focusing it. Focusing on there. The, the, at, at the front of the eye hole, 
where, where the handle goes in. Uh, what that's from, every single one of them has it. When they punch the hole in the head, they make a big hole, then they put a tool in that's the right size, and then close it in on that tool. So every one in maybe a different angle to get some glare. I don't know if that's showing up. We'll try to get it on a couple of others. But every single one has that crack. <laughs> Another thing, oh, I like that one. You, you don't see this very often, those kind of shadow lines that go crossways. They can be different sizes. But that, that one is cool looking. And there, that side's cool looking. And um, one, one thing I'll mention on initials, um, the, all the guys are experts. The quality doesn't matter from person to person. The people who have a preference, there are kind of two things that seem to stand out that, that have given people a preference. One, it's their own initials. Um, the other is they've like checked out the person, found their Facebook page or something like that. And so maybe one guy is, I don't know, maybe he's a super boring family guy that collects Beanie Babies and that's no fun. And another guy, I don't know, wrestles alligators, Swedish, <laughs> Swedish alligators. And so is more cool. I don't know. But I, I've heard people mention uh, having found somebody's Facebook page and it's probably not so much what he does, but they've seen the guy, they know what he looks like. And so a little more of a personal connection to the maker. And if you have a preferred maker, we will send you that one if we can. All right, so a little edit there. We tried to get this video done before the store opened, but people know that we come in early, so they come in early. So uh, we didn't want you to hear the background chit chat that can be distracting. So uh, I don't know if I was done talking about initials, but one more thing on the initials of the maker, not all makers do all models. So in what we've looked at today, um, I, I think only three makers will uh, come to mind. Uh, TT, MF, and MB are the ones at least that I remember noticing. But uh, while we were off, uh, Anne uh, wanted me or thought of a couple things I should point out. Now, on this particular ax, that, uh, the crack, uh, shows better. Here, I'll move it around and see if I can get the glare to go your way. Do you think you got it? Yeah, I think you can see it. Okay. And then something else some people ask about. Um, if you look there, can you make it show? Mm -hmm. There's sometimes a little bit of gap there or at the front. I don't This one doesn't really have any at the front, but um, I, I, I guess we don't have... Oh. There, I pushed some stuff out of the way. Can you see that? Those gaps absolutely do not matter. Uh, I've seen some really big gaps, not on Grand's Force, but on used axes, uh, <coughs> and, and they, they never, never matter. Okay, so back to, to just looking at them. Darker handle, good contrast. I like that one. Oh, something else, because it's glaring at me. The tool mark there, Occasionally people have, I'll roll it around and try to get it to glare for you. People will complain uh, or be concerned about dents and unevenness on the pole. When you look at that, that's not square at all. And uh, people are uncomfortable with that. It's handmade. It's not part of the tool as far as a functional part of the tool. It's just counterbalanced to the front. They're, they're handmade by a dude with big tools and a hammer. Um, that's what, it's what they look like. It's what they're supposed to look like. So don't be concerned. That one's kind of boring. And when it comes to exciting versus boring, super exciting, not very many. Those are pretty rare. Okay, we'd call this one okay looking. Um, now some people are really gonna, well, it's not perfectly straight, but it's fairly straight. Um, you know, that, that's, I don't know, we'll, we'll say half are pretty cool looking, or, or, or on the cool side, and half are on the boring side. Not very often that there's one that's downright ugly. To me, that's boring, but it looks like it's going to have 
pretty straight grain. Sometimes you get some two-tone in the wood. Some people have concern about that. But again, in all the broken handles I've seen, there's no correlation between the break and the two-tone. It might break on the light side, the dark side, or cross over, but it never runs down the line between them. There's just no connection to breakage and these kind of rules of thumb that you probably read about. There's a nice looking dark handle. Uh, fairly straight. It's not awesome looking. It's just nice looking dark wood. With, with the dark handles, you don't very often get a lot of contrast. But if somebody wanted a dark handle, that's a good dark handle. Well, this one's kind of two-tone-ish. Personally, I usually don't prefer two-tone, but sometimes there's some really cool looking two-tone stuff. And some people uh, request two-tone. Some people really like it. So this one's two-tone. <laughs> but it's uh, light on one side, dark on the other. So I'm totally cool with that. Uh, if that were my axe, I wouldn't care about the two-tone. I just don't like when it, I don't know, if it doesn't cross over in an artistic way, that's what I don't like. And that one, it's okay, you know, with those lines coming in together, sort of at the logo, but it's not exciting. The slope of the grain, plenty strong, no concern with that, but when the, when the grain sloped like that, or, or tilted, I, I don't know the terminology people use, slanted, no, slant, something. Maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, and a term people commonly use is proper grain orientation. Uh, proper grain orientation is nothing technical, it's kind of an internet buzzword. But, uh, oh, um, on these boxes, when we are fortunate enough to get original uh, Grand Sports boxes, we keep them here because people like to get those. Uh, you know, we'll mail it to you. But if you come in the store, ask if we have one, we hold on to them until somebody wants it. So this is a, a great looking dark handle, nice crisp stampings. A little lighter on this side, but good looking axe. This one's pretty sweet. Book came untied from that one, but we'll find it and get it reattached. Good stampings. So this two-tone is distracting to me. It's not what I like, but some people would like that. Pretty straight. Ooh, nice dark one, beautiful dark one. So this is one that we would set aside and not, oh, and really, and we may have looked at this one when we unboxed before. Um, you know, really straight. Somebody's going to love that axe, so we're not going to risk having somebody get it that isn't going to appreciate it, so we're going to set it aside and hold it for somebody that asks for that. Now, of all these, we've got two set aside, so don't, don't worry that we're hoarding all the good ones and won't let you have them or anything. And all you have to do is ask to get one, and then, of course, if you're the second person to ask for a dark one that we've set back, you're not going to get one, because so far we've only set one back that's totally awesome. We may grab, when we go back through those, there may be another one or two dark ones that we'll set aside. But that one was awesome. Now, some people would like this. It's um, kind of plain looking. You know, it's just, just a piece of wood. The opposite of what I like, but that doesn't matter. This one looks great. It's a little bit darker. Um, this is one beautiful stamps on the head. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in the set aside pile. Now, when you, when you order an ax, if you don't specify anything, you just get the next one. That doesn't mean it's going to be ugly. 
it's just, you know, the person packing your order just grabs one and puts it in a box for you. So MB has a fairly new stamp, I think. I've been noticing uh, how crisp his are in this box anyway. <coughs> so interesting look there. Again, some people would see that and be afraid of it. Never ever seen anything like that matter. So either it adds character or it's a distraction. Depending on how you see it, that side's more cool looking. Now I'll share one tidbit that's only timely right now. As this video ages, it'll be irrelevant. The Scandinavian Forest Axe has been out of production all this year as they update equipment. We, we've had a trickling uh, of Scandinavian Forest Axes coming in. And since they've retooled that, they have all new stamps and they're beautifully stamped. Now, of course, as a working tool, that doesn't matter. It only matters to people who like cool looking details. I don't think we found an ugly one. Um, no, we found some that are boring, but, but nothing that's ugly. This one's pretty cool. So I've said that enough times that people uh, get the hang of what it is I like. I will say of the very few uh, small forest axe handles that have ever broken, and this one's very straight. Of the very few that are broken, uh, has nothing, I kind of touched on this before, I guess, but has nothing to do with anything you can see. You look at it and try to determine, and this goes to uh, most broken axe handles I've seen. You look at it and try to determine why it broke, and you can't by looking. A um, couple that, that have uh, broken, the most interesting break that I saw on it was a small forest axe. Dude had it a short time, and it started a crack from the bottom of the handle where there's no force at all, and started cracking up the handle. <coughs> Warney took care of it because it, it happened fairly soon and, and there was no issue. We just exchanged uh, his axe. Um, the other one, and this is actually kind of a funny story. Emily, who used to work here uh, before we fired her for getting married and moving away, uh, she uh, picked a beautiful, uh, that was a Scandinavian forest axe for her fiance at the time, and gave it to him for Christmas. And he took it outside on Christmas Day and started chopping, and in less than 10 strikes, he broke the handle. She was so mad at him and uh, came in and told me how terrible he is that, that he broke that and all that. It was really funny how mad she was at him. And, but it absolutely was not his fault. When you've got a flawed piece of wood, it's going to break uh, right away. If you get through the first day of use or first couple of days of use, it's rock solid. And so that one, we replaced the handle, but she had picked a, a beautiful axe, straight grain and all that, and where it broke, no flaws inside, absolutely could not see any reason for it to break. And the same with the one that split from the bottom, you pry that open, look inside, can't, can't see anything wrong. So this is a great looking uh, handle. Since we're getting close to the end, Anne, is there anything that uh, people ask or say or whatever that you haven't reminded me to touch on? I know people ask if we have handles. Oh, replacement handles? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so we do have them, and they're exactly the same thing. They come out of the, the handle shop altogether. They're not designated replacement uh, when they're made. They have the logo. Everything is the same. When you put it in, there's no fitting to go right in. The only way you can tell uh, that it's been replaced is when you cut the top off if you don't do a very good job. Uh, everything else looks exactly the same. <coughs> and we, we stock the handles. Uh, we try to always have them, but we can't get large numbers of them. So, um, 
you know, if we don't have it, they're on order. A lot of people, mo most of them that we sell are to somebody, they're buying an ax and just want to have a spare. Some people will try to use them in non-Grands Force heads. Now, if you look at the shape of the eye, it's a little bit different and it's a fairly small eye. So Grands Force handles are commonly not a good choice to replace other brand handles or to put other brand heads onto. Sometimes it works, a lot of times people are disappointed. Now, if you take a handle that, it, that has space, oh, there's some space at the front of that one that we talked about earlier. Never gonna be a problem on this, that, that gap right there. So, I've done this, and maybe if we get around to doing a video of all my old axes, because I've been an ax enthusiast and tinkerer for ages, but <laughs> if you take a handle that doesn't quite fit, and I'm not encouraging you to make a Grand Force fit something that doesn't fit, but you can shim around the side and, and make it tight, and, and they stay. I've got a splitting maul that it, it was a really old one, a trapezoid shape eye instead of the teardrop of a modern handle. And I put a handle in it, took a whole lot of shimming, and it's like an eight pound maul head, and I've used it a lot, and it's still uh, completely solid. So. What, two more? Yeah, darker, medium dark. A little bit of two-tone. I don't mind that uh, when I say I don't like two-tones because that's kind of cool looking because it, like, fades in. So that, that one's all right. And the last one. We didn't save the best for last or anything. We just went in the order. This is a, a nice-looking one, two-tone-ish. So it gives, you know, cool look there, and then it's dark on that side, really straight grain. So the next box, uh, outdoor axes, it's a small handle, so you can't get a lot of cool looking stuff in those handles, so we won't do that one. Uh, I think we've hit on everything. Um, I don't think of anything else. So visit our website, omahanife.com. Uh, come into our store when you're traveling through, go to the website and click on directions to see where they are. If you want to order an ax and want to pick on these details, make a note or when you make your order, send a separate email. We try very hard to give people what they want. We'll do the best we can from our current inventory, uh, regardless of model. Uh, on initials, <coughs> you can request initials. If we uh, say I prefer, in this case, if you want MB, say I prefer MB, uh, if you don't want it, if it's not MB, be more clear on that. If we're out of MB, we would send you something else unless you say MB only or something like that. So I think that's it. So we'll wrap this up and, and we'll try to do a better job of making videos and, and sharing information with you. So subscribe to our channel and uh, we'll try to do a video more than to a year, which has been our, <laughs> our previous thing. So that'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching.